So it looks like Sherry Shepard is looking for some fresh energy. The pro executive producers that helped create the Sherry Shepard show and were spearheads for the Wendy Williams show have now been let go because she's looking for that fresh energy. I've been called talk show diva. I am not a diva. No. Whatever, Suzanne. <laughs> She's like, no. Welcome back to the Kempire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. So as you know, Sherry Shepard has faced a lot of bumps in the road in getting this new daytime talk show because she really was in the shadow, literal shadow of the Wendy Williams show and all the controversy surrounding Wendy Williams at the time. So as you know, Sherry was a fill-in celebrity guest host for Wendy a couple of a couple of times before she started doing it more consistently. And then there were all kinds of rumors and speculation on her taking over. Okay, fast forward to today. Yes, we've been critical of, not necessarily of uh, Sherry Shepard, we've been really critical of Debmar Mercury and how they handled this transition. And I feel like Sherry has faced a lot of criticism, unnecessary criticism, because of them and how this whole situation with Wendy Williams was handled. Also, not just putting this just on Dubmar Mercury, also the way that this whole situation with Wendy and everything that was going on in her life. However, she was a person, according to reports, dealing with addiction. So she had to focus on her health and her mental health and all of that. This is really not necessarily about Wendy. However, the two executive producers of this show helped start the Wendy Williams show. They were critical parts of the success of the Wendy Williams show. Just rewinding back to the whole Sherry Shepard situation. So people were critical of Debmar Mercury and how they handled this transition, partly because there were a lot of bamboozlements. So every time I look at, at how Sherry Shepard's YouTube is doing, I'm always in the back of my mind like, well, girl, you didn't really earn those subscribers because I think she's at like 300 and something thousand. Remember when she first, this YouTube channel was Nick Cannon's YouTube channel for his daytime talk show. And it had like 100 and something thousand subscribers at that point. So that says to me, Sherry, Prove us wrong by showing us your YouTube plaque of 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> but they probably, I wonder if YouTube gave her, this is a sidebar, if YouTube gave them a YouTube plaque for Sherry when she hit 200,000, I mean that she earned her, her own 100,000. Because it was very obvious, along with her, the Sherry Shepard Show um, Instagram account, that was Jerry O'Connell's. Again, we understand licensing. We're not fools when it comes to this. I'm just saying it just was, it seemed as if they were trying to make it seem like Sherry Shepard Show had already been a success by giving her uh, Jerry O'Connell's Instagram account that had several thousand followers there. And then this YouTube channel that had several thousand followers here. Sidebar. For those, of, for those of you that have been wanting to say, like, where is the Wendy Williams YouTube channel? The Wendy Williams YouTube channel is here. It's just now labeled Dubmar Mercury. And they're utilizing the millions of subscribers that are still subscribed to this YouTube channel to promote their other businesses. However, because Wendy is in the space that she's in, the business side of this YouTube channel falls under them. They now, I'm sure they, they had taken it down so they can make sure that they dotted their I's and crossed their T's to make sure that they're able to confiscate this YouTube channel and use it whatever way they will. Of course, Wendy's not thinking of these things because she's dealing with what she's dealing with. But they utilized this YouTube channel of almost 3 million subscribers to promote Sherry, to promote, you know, they also do celebrity, uh, not celebrity, um, what is it called? The Steve Harvey um, show that he does. I can't think of the name, y'all. You know what I'm talking about. And there are other shows that they produce. So they utilize this as their way of promoting their other projects. So all of Wendy's videos are there. However, when you go to the YouTube channel, you have to, you have to really Google schmoogle in order to find those old videos of Wendy. 
But that's a whole other story. The landscape of daytime talk right now is interesting. And I always say that it's interesting because it's not what it used to be. You know, we just lost Jerry Springer. When um, Wendy Williams is no longer on the air. Oprah is no longer on the air. The View is still around. And The View is, you know, I'm like, I have a, I have a one time I'm in with The View and I'm, I'm watching week after week. I think since the pandemic, I've sort of fallen off of watching The View just because busy. But it's not it's not necessarily my go to of daytime. I think it's probably one of the better ones of daytime. But that's also a cast of people on 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 this on this on this panel. But you know, I watched Jennifer Hudson's. Yes, I love these little cute viral moments with Jennifer Hudson. It's cute. Honestly, I don't love Jennifer Hudson as a daytime talk show host. Drew Barrymore. Cute. I don't love her as a daytime talk show host. Tamron Hall, she's she's far better and because she has history and um, the experience of being a journalist. Yes, yeah, she's a journalist, Portia. The experience of being a journalist, but that's also not a show that I watch. I'll watch clips of some of her, her viral moments. But other than that, I don't really watch that. I'm not going to sit here and say that I watch Sherry Shepard, but I have seen Sherry Shepard's more clips of Sherry Shepard, and I can see why people are gravitating to Sherry and why people like Sherry. Sherry is not Wendy Williams. She's never claimed to be Wendy Williams, and that's where Debmar Mercury did well. They did well in that in, in that regard because instead of doing what they try to do with Jerry O'Connell, trying to make him the white boy version of Wendy Williams, they were like, no, Sherry's been doing this. She did seven seasons of The View, so she has experience. She's a comedian. And I think it's working. And I know she just recently got nominated for a daytime Emmy. Sidebar, I didn't know that Sherry was a Taurus. <laughs> I had no idea. I usually know all the famous Tauruses. I didn't realize she was a Taurus. I mean, she's an April Taurus, but that's a whole other conversation. So, but she's doing well. And I have to say in the landscape of all the daytime talk shows, and yes, all of them have been renewed, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. A lot of these shows are being renewed because there really isn't great competition amongst them, to be honest. But that's just my view on daytime talk. That's not what you're here for. You're here for the story in regard. But I think it's important for us because we don't often have an opportunity to talk about what's going on in daytime talk, where where is it going right and where is it going wrong. I do believe that the Sherry Shepard show is going in the right direction. I think they just had a very bumpy start because of the Wendy Williams situation. Speaking of Wendy Williams, as you know, if you watch the Wendy Williams show, if you watch the, you know, Wendy Williams show after show that she used to do, you're very familiar with her staff. We have Suzanne, who I remember because I, I watched Wendy Williams from the beginning. Suzanne was there since the beginning. I'm busy minding my own business to really be digging in celebrities' trash and finding out what they're doing. And I'm also a, a good Christian girl, from a, and I was brought up well, and I don't love the misery of others. But we didn't... No, Suzanne, don't say what. No, don't say what. And at the time, she was just a producer. She elevated to an executive producer while working at the Wendy Williams show. And we also have David Perla, who came on. He wasn't there in the beginning, I don't believe. And he came in as an executive producer. So now the page six is reporting that both have been let go because Sherry would like to move into season two with some fresh energy. OK, so page six writes this. They says Sherry Shepard is washing her hands of Wendy Williams, top producers for season two of her daytime talk show. Shepard inherited Williams, a longtime executive producers, David Perla and Susan Bass, who also appeared with Williams on camera daily as EPs for her show when it premiered last fall. Sources told page six that they got the axe this week as season one of Sherry comes to a close at the end of this month. We're told Shepard naturally wanted, quote, fresh energy for her new season. The decision doesn't, doesn't come as a surprise to Perla, according to Page Six, since he stayed on to help get through the hump of launching a new show, according to one source. That makes sense. And it's not just about starting a new show. It's about starting a new show in an environment that he's very familiar with. So then there's that. And I'm sure... He, we have to remember a lot of these folks that are part of the Wendy Williams show really just wanted to keep their jobs. They, their jobs were up in the air for a year 
and they weren't sure people were concerned, according to multiple sources, about their positions because is Wendy Williams going to come back? What's going to happen if Wendy doesn't come back? So I, I'm sure that not only will we see Perla and Suzanne just because they are known people, I'm sure there are other people that will be leaving the show as well just because they want to do other things. Maybe they just... It's television, too. You, you see a high turnover rate a lot in entertainment. But they probably were like, okay, nothing against Sherry, but I need to, I want I want some fresh energy in my life. I want to do more. And maybe there isn't more to do at the Sherry Shepherd show. Or maybe this is not what they signed up for. They signed up to work for Wendy Williams. You never know. People have different intentions. Some people will sign up for a position because they want to be in television or they want to be in daytime talk or they want to work with that particular star. Maybe they even like, not, nothing against Sherry. I didn't sign up to work with Sherry Shepard. I signed up to work with Wendy Williams. Very possible. All these are possible. I don't think this is as bad as the media wants to make it. She fired them. She wants fresh energy. I don't think it's that bad. But it is interesting to know what's going on behind the scenes because these are people that we would see often on camera with Wendy Williams. So they continue. They say um, Bass... Suzanne was more of a, quote, sidekick and buffer to Williams' former Hot Topics act, which isn't a use, which isn't as useful for Shepard, who is also a comedian and actress. Suzanne was on camera for a decade with Wendy, another source said. But Shepard's producer, Bestie, Jean Murray, as you may know, he's, he's been a, a gossip columnist for a very long time. Um, John Murray, a TV commentator who is new to executive producing, partially took on that role when Shepard brought him in. And I'm sure he also probably learned a thing or two from Perler and Suzanne to be an executive producer, which I think is amazing for him. And he probably will go on after this daytime talk show and executive produce other things. A spokesperson for Dubmore Mercury, the production company behind both the Williams and Shepard shows, told us we will announce a new executive producer for the second season to serve alongside John Murray. All right. The statement further said that Perla and Bass, quote, have been integral to Dubmore Mercury's success in daytime syndication for many years and help help launch Sherry. Dubmore Mercury wishes them all the best on future endeavors and hopes to work with them in the future. So it's a very, very plain, very, you know, politically correct statement, which makes people want to go like, oh, so this probably wasn't their decision. But they've both worked in television for a long time. Both of these people are very experienced. As I said before, Suzanne elevated to executive producer. So now she can go on and take another daytime talk show and demand a certain amount of money, a, a, a certain title. So people grow. This is just business. This is just the entertainment business. I'm not completely shocked by this news. And I and I, I'm all and honestly, I don't think, you know, of course, Sherry is the face of the show, so she's going to get the brunt of the backlash or the weight of, you know, how people feel about this. But one thing that that's also in the news in regards to Sherry was the advice that she gave to Sonny Hostin, you know, who's now on the view. And that was the sharing her salary when she was on The View with Sonny. When I signed my deal sheet, um, you k gave me a call. I don't know yes. how you got my number, but you gave me a call. <laughs> Girl, I can stalk somebody if I want You to. really did, and you were like, I heard you coming on the show. And I was like, yeah, I'm joining the show. She was like, did, did they uh, give you car stipend? I was like, no. <laughs> Did they give you this? I was like, no. I was like, let me get my deal sheet out. And you basically went over your salary for the entire time you were there. And you also gave me Jenny McCarthy's salary. Yes, I did. She got me I paid. I gave everybody's salary. You gave me everyone's salary. Cause she's like, I heard, I heard you were getting this new position on The View. Here's my salary information. Then she ended up giving Rosie O'Donnell salary, uh, salary inf information and Jenny McCarthy. And we talked about this before, if you've been watching Channel for a very long time, where people need to start talking about their salaries, especially in entertainment. And it's very like, I know Andy Cohen, Bravo, they never want you to talk about your salaries because of this point. They do not want people having negotiation power. That's the whole reason why they don't want to talk about salaries. But what I love that Sherry did when Sherry was on The View and re renegotiating her contract, Rosie O'Donnell gave her 
everyone's salary, including Rosie's salary, so that she knew what she was working with. She helped her negotiate so that she wasn't out here making chump change. And Sherry, because this story, Sonny told this story on Sherry's show. Sonny, Sherry said that, you know, she felt it was necessary for her to pass it forward for what was done for her. And I love that. I love that. And as content creators, I'm sure you all deal with, or even if you're just someone that is an entrepreneur and you're negotiating these contracts, a lot of the times they're hoping that you will take whatever they offer you. And a lot of times you will. You will just take it like, oh, I never was offered that amount of money. And I think as content creators, if we talked more about how much are you getting paid for this or how much are you getting paid for that? A lot of people don't want want to talk about those things and that we sort of set each other up for some people are making a lot more money than you really think that they are or are far less making a lot far less because no one's talking about their salaries. So I appreciated that element of the story. I think Suzanne and David will go on to do amazing things. Who knows? They may be the executive producers behind the Kempire daytime talk show. All right, girl. <clears throat> maybe you never know you never know guys i want to know your thoughts on this do you think there's any smoke to it do you think that this is just i mean it's every day someone's losing their job or moving on to bigger and better things when one door closes something else opens just saying Let's continue this conversation in the comment section. I want to know your thoughts. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. Thanks for watching. Ooh, you bring the lighter. I got the fuse. You make a fire. I'll ask you. Follow my lead.